and blessed be the name of the Lord our God, mm -hmm. from whom all blessings flow. Certainly my help cometh from the Lord. Amen. Are you ready to receive what God has in store? Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, yes. As we would open up the book, look into the word of God that he might speak into our lives Amen. this morning. We want to continue our pursuit of Ephesians, amen, the series, The God Who Blesses, amen. amen, The God Who Blesses. Today's uh, point of emphasis, as we share in this morning's message, a prayer to know, a prayer to know, a prayer to know, mm -hmm. amen. We've heard the scripture read earlier in our hearing from the first chapter of Ephesians, verse 15 through verses 23, and that would be the reference for our message today, out of which we hope to learn and grow as the Lord would speak to us. The God who blesses. Um, it is said that scientists know that ducks tend to imprint soon after birth. What they mean by imprint is that they attach themselves to the first thing that they see after they hatch. And they would think that they are that thing. This is supposed to work for the duck since in most occasions when they hatch, the first thing that they normally would see would be mama duck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, however, this phenomenon backfires occasionally. Once, for example, a duck was hatched under the watchful eye of a motherly collie dog. So the baby duck took one look at the collie and decided that the dog was its mother. And it would follow the collie around. It would run to it for protection. It would sleep with the collie at night. It spent the hot part of the day under the front porch with the collie. When a car would pull into the driveway right alongside of the dog, the duck would run out from under the front porch, quacking viciously, trying to peck the tires. My brothers and sisters, some things could not be changed, however. The duck still quacked. It enjoyed the water and flapped its wings. Yes. Sometimes it acted like a duck, and sometimes it acted like a dog. Mm. Um, sometimes Christians experience similar confusion mm. in its identity. Mm. We've been born into and grown up in a fallen world. Yes, yes. So we have learned the ways of the world. We have become like it. Mm. Well. When we become a Christian, we are in Christ. Yes. We die to the world and are born again. Yes. So that spiritually we are no longer who we once were. Mm. And so I want you to think about that in relationship uh, to this series of messages, the God who blesses. And today as we would share this particular uh, message, a prayer to know as we would read 
here in the text. He says, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus' love and your love for the saints, did not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. And so as he would go on from there, and he would insert himself into the heart of his prayer, he would begin to pray that God would do something particularly uh, in the life of the believer, in the life of the church. There's an importance of prayer in our lives. Amen. Matthew 26, 41 will remind us, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 2 Chronicles 7, 14 would say this to us, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Matthew 5, 44 says it like this, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you. Amen. Matthew 9, 38 would say this, therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Luke 5 and 16 would say this to us. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness, speaking of Jesus, and prayed. Luke 18 and 1 would tell this. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says this, Pray without ceasing. 1 Timothy 2 and 8 would share this with us, I desire therefore that the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, it's with that in mind of the importance of prayer that we look at today's message so we would learn a prayer to know. Uh, we are to know of who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. In the words of Matthew Henry, even the best of Christians need to be prayed for. And while we hear well of our Christian friends, we should think of us, think ourselves obliged to intercede with God for them, and they may abound and increase yet more and more. Yes, we need prayer. Yes. We need prayer, particularly in the context of today's message, because it's so important for us to realize the uh, who we are in Christ Jesus. We like the duck, the little duck following around the collie, running around pecking tires when cars come by because we think we're something other than who we yeah. really are in Christ Jesus. Yes, there are two prayers that are shared here in the letter to the church at Ephesus. One in this chapter that we addressed this morning and one in chapter 3. The one in chapter 3 would prompt us in prayer or through prayer that we would be something, that we would become what the first prayer here in chapter 1 tells us that we would know. 
So here he prays that our minds would be enlightened, that we would be informed, that we would be able to receive the knowledge of God as he would share in these first three chapters. In other words, that we would know who we are in Christ Jesus. God being the God who blesses, that we might know the blessings that we have obtained, that we have received, and that we are receiving yet still. Yes, yes Lord Jesus. So he would pray that we might know what Christ has done for us. Later on, he's going to pray that we might live up to what we know about these wonderful blessings that God has distributed into our daily lives. He's not done yet with what it is that God would make known to the church. Yet he would pause to take an opportunity to share in prayer that God would allow what is being presented to resonate in the hearts and in the minds of his people yes, that we might be able to receive it. Yes. That it would not, as some would say, go in one ear and out the other. But that we would allow it to germinate, take root in our lives and grow up. And so my brothers and sisters, he would pray uh, that we would not only be enlightened but comprehend what God is sharing with us. And it's that same prayer that we ourselves today would take with us, that we would be enlightened, that our eyes would be opened, that we would comprehend, we would understand what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to the church. God is unfolding the mystery. Mm of the gospel in front of our very eyes. Amen. And he would ensure that we understand it, that we would know the truth of the scriptures, that we may fully understand all these spiritual blessings. Yes. And so here today, I want to share with you three points before I sit down. As God will share with us, this prayer that is yet continually being uttered on our behalf. That we would be enlightened in relationship to our hope, our riches, and God's power. And so let us begin with the first of these three, our hope. Look at verse 18 as he would share the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. God wants us to fully relate to and receive the hope that we have in this world. Hope is that which would pull us and draw us and continue to prod us in this journey that we're on and that we've undertaken in life. It's hope that we can look to that would constantly encourage us when things are looking dreary, when it seems as if we are to give up in life. Hope tells us, no, no, don't you dare give up. Continue in the journey because there is a promise that is awaiting us on the other side of tomorrow. Our hope is built on the promises which are ours in Christ Jesus. Yes, as he would share early on with us in terms of our relationship to God and how he has chosen us and predestinated us how he has redeemed us. Yeah. It's on the foundation of these promises that God has implanted within our hearts. Yes, Lord. And we find strength and courage. It's that hope mm -hmm. that allows us to live 
in the present. It's the hope of tomorrow's brighter day that would encourage today, though it might be cloudy outside, though it might uh, be rainy, though it might have storms uh, in our way, it's the hope that God places in our lives that continue to prepare us for the hope of his calling on our lives. Mm -hmm. The Christian as it is said by Warren Wiersbe who does not know his calling will never be able to walk worthy of that calling. Mm -hmm. Just let that resonate for a moment and sink in. Mm -hmm. The Christian mm -hmm. who does not know his high calling mm -hmm. will never be able to walk worthy of that calling. Because we first of all have to fully understand and comprehend what it is that God is calling us to in order to follow the footsteps of the Lord. God has a high calling, a holy calling, and a heavenly calling for our life. My brothers and sisters, we ought not take the calling of God on our lives lightly. No, no. That's why it's called a high calling. Mm. Because it's a calling that goes beyond ordinary. It goes beyond the mundane. It goes beyond the trifling and the trivial. trivial. It's a high calling. God has placed a high calling on the life of the church, on the life of each and every believer in him. And so Paul would write and share with the church that I'm praying for you, that you might fully understand the calling of God on your life. How it is that he has chosen us and called us unto himself. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, as the writer of the hymn would share, my hope is built on nothing less yeah. than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. Yes. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest in his unchanging grace. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody here? Yes. yes, that would dare to place their hope in Christ Jesus yes, and his finished work on Calvary's cross. Knowing that, my brothers and sisters, it's a firm foundation. It's a solid ground to stand on. Yes. Mm. yes. Yes, not only does he pray for our hope in his high calling, but he would then go on to continue his prayers in relationship to our riches. There's our hope, but then there's our riches. That we need to fully comprehend and understand. Look at the text. The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. These riches may refer to our present spiritual riches in Christ and being free from sin. May place in a position to where we can fellowship with God. But my brothers and sisters, they also relate to 
our heavenly possession of the riches and glories of God. God has in store for you and I an abundance of riches. He started this first chapter by speaking in that third verse of our spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And he'll refer to this idea of heavenly places on more than one occasion. Yes, because when we began to look at our blessings, there is the tying together. There is the relationship of us being down here and yet our connection, our affinity to him up there. God will refer to the church He'll speak more in the fifth chapter about this subject matter, but he refers to the church in relationship uh, to a bride and a groom. My brothers and sisters, we are married to Christ. And so God will speak in relationship to our heavenly position, our heavenly place in him, and the inheritance that we have in that relationship, the rewards that we receive because of it. Uh, in the book, in the, the Weight of Glory, uh, C.S. Lewis wrote this, we are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition, when infinite joy is offered us, like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what it meant, what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Mm. My brothers and sisters, when we are aware of who we are and what we possess, it can't help but affect the way we live out our lives. Right. Oftentimes, <coughs> we oftentimes live small lives because we are disconnected from the reality of our inheritance in Christ Jesus. If we would live according to the high calling of God, it's then that we can see the riches of our inheritance in God. And when we see the riches of our inheritance of God, we have to lift up our lives and we have to lift up our standards. Yes, yes, yes. We're like the little duckling chasing cars. We're like the little duckling running to the collie for safety and protection. Well, mm -hmm. When we don't fully understand and appreciate and receive mm -hmm. who we are in Christ Jesus, yes, we have someone who can provide better protection. We have someone who can lift us up higher and place us where we belong, but we're too busy living under the porch with a colony. There was a woman who lived a very meager lifestyle, shopping at thrift stores, sometimes eating from the garbage cans. When this woman died, it was discovered that she was a wealthy woman. Even though she was living her life like a peasant. Think about it. We are oftentimes just like this woman 
living peasant lives, meager lives. We live beneath our means because we don't realize who we are in Christ. And so my brothers and sisters, if I could leave you with not only a prayer for our hope, but a prayer for our riches. Hope is of his high calling. The riches are of his glory yes. or the glory of his inheritance that we have. We have an inheritance in God. Yes. We're heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Yes. And God wants us to fully understand and know just who it is that we are so that we can raise up our heads, we can raise up our lives, we can raise up our standards of living, knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Verse 19, he would leave us with this final point that we would share with you on today. He would pray that we would know. He wants us to understand God's power. If we understand God's power, then we won't have to be shy about who it is that we are in life because we would know that God has it all under control. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? He says, God has power for the believer. Yes, yes, yes. Catch this. God has the power for those who are here, those who walk with him and talk with him. But he not only tells us that God has great and exceeding power. But he says, I want to give you an example of that power. He says, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in, hell, in the heavenly place. Once again, he made reference to the heavenly places. Watch this. As we talk about the mighty power of God, and he gives us a reference to base God's power on. He's already have done enough. If he never does anything else for you, understand this, he's already done enough. He shows us his resurrection power. The power that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. When everyone thought that they were through with this nuisance, uh, when everyone thought that they had been done with him on Calvary's cross, uh, yes, as they would ridicule him and mock him, God would do it once again. God would show off and show out. God would show them that he is God. Lord of Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. says that you want to see who I am. You want to see what I'm about. Watch me now. Yes, go ahead. As the song would say. Mock me and call me now. Go ahead. And place my body in the tomb. Go ahead. But then he goes on and says this. I'll rise again. Yes. Can't no grave hold my body down. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord Jesus. The power God demonstrated in raising Christ from the dead and placing him above all creation is the same power. Yes. He is exercising, exercising towards you and I to bring about the blessings which he has promised us. And so he would 
utilize the resurrection of Christ to help us to understand and to embrace and receive the blessings that God has for us. Amen. Says, I'm not done yet. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes, I not only do I have resurrection power, but I also have reigning power. Look again at verse 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, seated him. Yes, my brothers and sisters, he sits on his throne on the right hand of the Father yes. like the king that he is. That's where he's seated. He's seated in reigning power. Yes, he reigns. Yes. No grave can hold his body down. Uh, yes, uh, but he was not uh, relegated to this earth. Yes, after he would rise from the dead. Uh, yes, after he would walk amongst men uh, and show them that he is risen. Uh, yes, after he would walk into a room without utilizing a door. After he would go to them uh, and show them that he is alive. Allow Dowling Thomas to place his hand in the prince. Yes, uh, after he has done all of these things, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, he would ascend up into the sky where the disciples, the apostles, would watch him go. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The angels would have to remind them, be encouraged. Just as you see him go, yes, he'll come back again to receive us unto himself. Yes, he's going yes. to sit on the side of his father. He's going, uh, yes, to intercede for the saints. He's going to reign in victory. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Because he's king of kings. He's Lord of and Lord of lords. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 Yes. So he's reigning in power. Listen, in verse 21, he would go further with this thing. He says, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Yes. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. Yes, he is high and lifted up. Yes, yes uh, he shall reign. Yes, yes uh, my brothers and sisters, look at the text closely. Yes, there are demons in him, Satan, principalities and powers that are out there moving about. But he says he's higher than any of that. Yes. So we all not live in our lives relegated to the basement of life afraid of our own shadows, afraid of what Satan might do next. What evil lurks around the corner because he's higher than that. Far above all principality yes. and power. Yes, yes he is. Yes. Any name that there is, you name one. <laughs> name some baseball great. He's higher. That's right. <laughs> Some football grade, he's higher. Some basketball grade, he's higher. Yes. yes, you just pick a name. Yes, there is no name above the name of Jesus. Yeah, amen. He's high and lifted up. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. But not only that, listen, he shall reign not for a day, not for a season. Not only in this age, but also in that which is to come forever and ever and ever. He shall reign. Yes, my Lord. Yes, he will. Forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Throughout all eternity. God is in control. 
Yes, Satan is actively seeking whom he may devour. Yes, evil is ever present in the midst of a dark and dying world. Yet, my brothers and sisters, this confidence we can have, as the song would say, God's got it all in control. He holds the stars in the sky. He holds the land back from the sea. And if he can do all of that, surely he can take good care of you and me. Yes, yes. yes my brothers and sisters, the God who blesses. Yes, yes uh, God is blessing us. And the prayer that God would have over your life and my life is that we would fully comprehend and understand his blessings on us yes, yes. who believe. There was a TV show, and I'm about to sit down now. There was a TV show that came on the USA channel. Uh, and uh, it focused on individuals who with lives would get derailed, and they would find themselves hanging around the wrong crowd. Yes, gangsters, money launderers, drug dealers, murderers, and so forth. Yes. Uh, and, and, and as a part of a deal they would make with law enforcement, they would wind up testifying against those individuals that they would work for and organizations that they were a part of. And as a result of them testifying, the government would give them a deal. Mm -hmm. And the deal would consist of what is called WITSEC, Witness Protection, where they would assume a new identity. They would be relocated to some obscure place within the country. And it was very critical for them to understand their new identity, their new name, and who it is that they were. It was important and critical that they would not slip up and reassume their old identity, that they would keep in tune and in touch with their new name, their new identity, and who they were in their new location. Well, my brothers and sisters, we're just like that. Yes, God has placed us in witness protection programs. Yes, uh, we have a new name all right. over in glory. Yes, uh, God has delivered us, uh, yes, uh, from our old lifestyle, our old crimes, our old ways, uh, and has given us new identity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I know sometimes it happens and we forget who we are in Christ Jesus, but God says it's important for you to understand your new identity in Christ. Yes, Lord Jesus. Sometimes we try to go back and contact some of our old uh, friends and acquaintances from our old lifestyle, but it might wind up getting us dead. Yes, uh, and so if you're in witness protection, uh, yes, you can't hang out uh, with the criminals of the past. Uh, yes, because you might uh, run into somebody who you done testified against. Come on. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, yes, wow, uh, yes, our sins have been forgiven and yes. pardoned in Christ Jesus. Uh, yes, uh, yet and still. Yes, we got to realize that we ought to walk in a newness of life. But yes, God wants us to embrace our new identity. Yes, 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 he does. Yes, he does. Paul prayed that we would learn that we are not the same. That's what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 is talking about. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Every day God is working on me. Yes, yes he is molding me. He yes. is working on our thoughts. Uh, yes, he is building our character. Yes, God is working on us. Yes, he is. Sending up timber. 
on our behalf. God leads the readers on from the hope of itself. Yes. God will lead us to the splendor of inheritance which we hope. My brothers and sisters, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. It's with his blood that he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. And I don't mean to be selfish about it. Just go on and point to yourself. Raise me. Thank you, Lord. You've been born again. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your first little Savior. Yes. Uh, with his blood, he has saved me. By his power, he has raised me. Do you know him? Yes. yes. Do you know what he will do in your life? What he can do and how he can turn it around? How he can fix it for you? My brothers and sisters, as we stand on our feet, doors of the church open. The same prayer that we learn about and speak about that is prayed over our lives can also be extended to those who are yet to believe. Doors of the church are open, but this is an opportunity that you can receive the blessings that God has in store for your life.